Oh, good morning. Welcome to the Read Aloud for Matter Makes It All Up. Uh, it's a book by Rochelle Urban and Ashley Chase, published by Amplify Science. So at first glance, the ecosystem may seem like a bunch of unrelated things that just happen to be in the same place. Different kinds of animals are running, swimming, or flying around. Plants are growing in various shapes and sizes. Besides all these living organisms, there are also non-living parts in the ecosystem, like rocks, water, or air. How are these parts connected? For example, think of some parts in a Florida swamp ecosystem. Why do a rock, a cypress tree, and an alligator and a heron really have in common? An ecologist is a scientist who studies ecosystems. To an ecologist, the parts of an ecosystem have something very important in common. In fact, you could say that they are all the same deep down. All parts of an ecosystem are made of matter. Matter makes up the air, water, soil, rocks, animals, plants, and everything else. Matter is made up of tiny atoms that are too small to see. There are many different kinds of atoms, and these atoms can combine to form a huge number of different kinds of molecules. Individually, atoms and molecules are too small to see. However, billions and trillions of atoms and molecules together can make up a rock, a tree, a bird, or even an alligator. The photo on the left here shows a few organisms in an Everglade swamp ecosystem. So, what does it really mean to say that an animal is made of matter? If you could look at the inside the body of an alligator, you would see muscles, bones, blood, and different body systems. All of the parts of an alligator are made of matter. For example, let's zoom in on a muscle. The muscle is made up of smaller parts. These parts are made up of even smaller parts, which are made of molecules. These molecules are made up of atoms. It's all matter. So this is a close-up of a muscle as seen through a microscope. Here's an even closer view of what makes up that muscle. And then this image shows a model of a molecule that makes up the muscles. We can't really show what the molecules look like. Uh, the individual molecules are too small to see, even with a microscope. A full-grown alligator may weigh 360 kilograms, which is about 800 pounds. That's a lot of matter. Where does it all come from? How does an alligator grow to be so big? Alligators and other animals never stop growing. Even an adult animal that has stopped getting bigger keeps growing new skin and blood. If an animal gets wounded or breaks a bone, its body can grow to repair the damaged parts. All that new bone, muscle, blood, and skin doesn't just appear from nothing. Since an animal is made of matter, when it grows, it needs to add more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. That's how animals grow. Alligators are about 15 centimeters or six inches long when they hatch, but they can grow to be about four meters or 13 feet long. New matter needed for growth comes from what an animal eats. Food is also made of matter. When an animal eats food, it is eating billions and billions of atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules are all matter that the animal uses to grow. Inside the animal's body, the food molecules are broken down and used to build new molecules that make up bone, blood, muscle, skin, and other body parts. This alligator is eating a bird it caught in the swamp. Not all the matter that an animal eats gets added to the animal's body. Some of the matter isn't used by the animal. This matter ends up as, a different kind of, as different kinds of waste, including droppings. More important, the animal uses some of the food matter to get energy. Animals need energy to move and do all of the things that animals do. When an animal uses matter to get energy, that matter is changed and released as gases into the air. Not all the matter from food ends up as part of the animal's body. Some of the matter becomes droppings, like the alligator droppings shown above. The animal also uses some of the matter to get energy, changing the matter and releasing it into the air. Okay, so this is where you should stop for Thursday, May 14th's lesson. I'm going to continue to read through the rest of the book. So ecologists think a lot about eating. Eating is one of the most important ways that matter moves through an ecosystem. All the animals in an ecosystem need to eat. Most of those animals are also eaten by some other animal. In order to understand an ecosystem, it's important to figure out what eats what. Figuring out what eats what can be difficult. An ecosystem may have countless organisms of many different kinds. 
all those different kinds of organisms interact in complicated ways. To find out what each kind of animal eats, scientists collect data. They observe animals in nature and record what those animals eat. If scientists find a dead animal, they may observe the inside of its stomach. That way, they can gather data about what the animal ate before it died. Scientists also look at data that other scientists have collected in the past. So this bird is eating a fish that it caught in the swamp. And these ecologists are gathering data about tiny animals that live in a swamp. Ecologists need lots of data to figure out what eats what. Ecologists make diagrams to show what eats what in an ecosystem. Let's look at an example of an alligator again. Alligators often eat birds called great blue herons. Great blue herons often eat carp, a kind of fish. Carp often eat bladderwort, a kind of plant that grows in swamps. A diagram showing how these animals interact is called a food chain. So the arrows in the food chain diagram show the direction that matter moves through the ecosystem. When a carp eats a bladderwort plant, some of the matter from the plant gets turned into the part of the body of the carp. When a heron eats the carp, some of the matter from the carp gets turned into part of the body of the heron. When an alligator eats the heron, some of the matter from that heron gets turned into the body, uh, part of the body of the alligator. The same matter that made up the bladderwort plant eventually ends up as part of the alligator's body. Where did that matter that makes a bladderwort plant come from? Plants don't eat, but they do take in matter from the air and water. They use this matter to make their own food. Plants can use the food that they make to build their bodies. Only plants and plant-like organisms such as algae can take in matter from non-living things and use it to make food. That's why you'll find plants or algae at the beginning of almost every food chain. A food chain helps trace the way matter moves through an ecosystem, but it doesn't give the whole picture. A food chain just shows just one food for each animal, but most animals eat more than one kind of food. To understand an ecosystem better, Colleges combine many food chains together to make a food web. A food web shows that some animals eat more than one kind of food. It also shows that some organisms are eaten by more than one kind of animal. Food webs show how lots of different food chains are connected. On the next page is a food web for the alligator's ecosystem. It shows that alligators don't just eat her herons, they also eat raccoons, marsh rabbits, frogs, and carp. In fact, most of the organisms in the food web eat or are eaten by many other organisms. This food web still doesn't show all the different relationships in the ecosystem. There are thousands of kinds of organisms in the ecosystem, and the food web only shows a few of them. The food web also doesn't show any of the non-living parts of the ecosystem, like air, water, and rocks. Still, matter moves back and forth between living and non-living things all the time. For example, whenever an animal breathes in and out, matter moves through the ecosystem in complicated ways that are challenging to trace, but it's still all the same matter. When ecologists look at ecosystems, they see matter moving and changing, going from one part of the ecosystem to another. Matter from a bladderwort plant will someday become part of the body of an alligator. Matter from the body of an alligator will someday become part of the air and soil. In an ecosystem, the same matter keeps getting recycled over and over. It becomes part of many different living and non-living things alligators, rocks, birds, plants, and air. Matter makes up everything in the ecosystem. Right? And here we have our glossary, so I'll just read through this. So in algae it are plant-like organisms such as seaweed that live in fresh water or salt water and have no flowers or roots. An atom is a tiny piece of matter that's too small to see. Data are observations or measurements recorded in an investigation. Diagram is an illustration that shows how something works or what its parts are. An ecologist is a scientist who studies ecosystems. An ecosystem is a community of organisms together with its environment. Energy is the ability to make things move or change. A food web is a diagram that shows what eats what in an ecosystem. Uh, to interact means to affect one another. Matter is the stuff that things are made of. A model is something scientists make to answer questions about the real world. A molecule is a group of atoms joined together in a particular way. To observe means to use any of your five senses to gather information about something. Organism is a living thing, such as a plant or animal. Uh, to record means to write or uh, to draw or write down information. 
Soil is a mixture of rocks, water, air, parts of dead organisms, and tiny living organisms. And a system is a group of parts that work together. And that is the end of our book. And I'll see you next time.